societal crisis, resilience, and pandemics with a focus on human behavior, change processes, and complex systems. In addition to research, he also works with providing practical behavioral science policy advice on both national and local levels. All right, thank you so much, Manny. Yeah, hi, welcome everyone. Uh, so you've had a uh, long day already, right? <laughs> So let me share my screen. Here we go. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little about um, uh, perhaps something a bit different from uh, what you've seen uh, uh, so far. So uh, my perspective is sort of an, on the on a bit of a uh, coarser uh, scale so the only thing uh, i know about covid immunology is that uh, yeah it's not good to get covid so um, i'm going to talk a little about how those are change in general uh, tends to uh, happen and how, how behaviors in uh, in uh, social systems um, uh, can and do uh, change so uh, in order for any behavior uh, to take place uh, you basically need to have uh, three conditions uh, in place. So you need to have uh, uh, some capability to do the behavior. You need to have some motivation to be, do the behavior and you need to have the opportunity to do the behavior. And uh, at this point, someone is going, oh, but the, uh, if someone puts a gun into my head, then I'm not motivated to do it. But yeah, sure. Uh, you are motivated to do it. Gun, gun on your head is a motivation. It's not a very long lasting motivation because once someone re removes the uh, threat of uh, punishment, uh, then uh, you usually stop performing the behavior that you were uh, forced to do. So we call that the uh, uh, extrinsic uh, motivation that's derived from uh, external uh, uh, factors and not intrinsic motivation, which would be due to uh, feeling uh, a uh, a uh, sense of uh, internal motivation, be it from uh, pleasure or um, or uh, be a, a behavior being aligned with your ideals or values and so forth. So in, in short, for example, in order to uh, avoid uh, getting uh, uh, COVID, you would, uh, you would uh, need to know how to avoid getting COVID, you would need to want to avoid getting COVID, and you would have to have the physical and social opportunities to avoid getting uh, COVID. And uh, but this look very within individual factors uh, at the first blush. And we tend to, at least in, in, uh, in the Western uh, sphere, uh, we often tend to look at them from a within individual perspective. But it doesn't take a lot of thinking uh, or reflection when you uh, realize that for any behavior, uh, nobody really knows everything. So we rely on other people a lot. Uh, so. Uh, uh, for for knowledge and uh, we uh, take much from other people and we also share our knowledge uh, with other people uh, so that we wouldn't have to uh, be overwhelmed by the all the capabilities in the world that we need to survive uh, in the modern uh, environment and also much of motivation comes from observing others around us so what we all constantly do is we look at what other people are doing and uh, often implicitly we derive from that uh, a judgment about whether this behavior is uh, sensible or not or safe or not and uh, and so forth and the uh, physical and social opportunities to do something so resources social approval and so forth they uh, always of course involve uh, other people so just to put it uh, shortly is that we are mentally and physically integrated with the people around us so we are not as the uh, um, individualistic as we would often like to think of us uh, being being a sort of sort of islands in in a vast uh, uh, sea and this sort of implicate implies that we need to find work ways to work with the people in our, uh, our community uh, not against them and do that without uh, risking ostracism and i'll come back to that a little later uh, the next thing i wanted to talk about was uh, collective illusions so this is a term that todd rose has done a um, uh, great service in popularizing uh, in his book uh, of the same name that came out this year uh, so a collective illusion is the situation where uh, the majority of people in a group 
uh, end up doing something that they that none of them privately agree with because everyone just incorrectly infers that the group wants something that they uh, privately don't. And I, I'll give an example of this. So you have a bunch of people here uh, sitting on a table, maybe it's a workplace, and uh, there's this one guy, uh, everyone knows he's super smart because he has a big head. And uh, so he says, uh, everyone should just return to work on site. After all, the pandemic is over. And uh, then everyone kind of gets quiet and no one says anything. And uh, so this guy thinks, uh, oh, well, no one's saying really anything. So I guess, I guess they agree. And this is, of course, this is not a problem. It becomes a problem when everyone actually uh, thinks the same way. And so now all of these people think that this is the group's consensus. And uh, they might, may not have any willingness to start uh, uh, questioning their uh, idea. And we are actually really bad at uh, deriving uh, group consensus from implicit uh, cues. So it's OK to disagree with our community views. But we shouldn't just assume what those views are, and we can't we can't really resolve any issues on a, on the societal level if we don't understand what the issues actually are. If we are just uh, thinking that oh, uh, it's just me who is crazy and everyone else uh, 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 thinks something else. And then a third and last uh, idea that I wanted to bring uh, here is the um, is an idea about the how change. Uh, happens. So we can have gradual change uh, or linear change, and we can have abrupt change or a nonlinear uh, change, if you wish. So here we have uh, the acceptance of an idea in a society. So the more time uh, goes on, the uh, more the acceptance uh, grows. And so this happens sort of uh, steadily and nicely. And so if, uh, uh, if we need, we have a sort of time to adapt and we can um, uh, predict quite nicely, okay, so what's going to happen next? And uh, so we have time to make uh, adaptations and re reparations if something uh, uh, goes uh, wrong. But often what happens in these sorts of uh, social systems is that uh, ideas actually uh, spread like this. So that first you have nothing, 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 nothing happening. And then suddenly a lot, all the change happens almost at once. And a way to understand why this happens in, in this way is that uh, it's via the metaphor of attractor landscape. So there's a mathematical underpinning that I'm using, using this here just as the uh, uh, um, framework of understanding this process. So we have, this, is, this uh, resembles a society with two states. So these valleys here are states and uh, or attractors. And uh, so this attractor means that the long COVID requires action. And this is that long COVID is not really not an issue. So most of society thinks that long COVID isn't, isn't an issue. And this ball represents the state of the society at this uh, uh, particular point of time. And what can happen if we sort of uh, don't, if we go to this, uh, uh, um, situation where we don't reveal our true preferences and we don't question the group's consensus, but we just go along with it, is uh, often that uh, the society seems to sit still on the same uh, spot and uh, nothing really seems to be happening. But what, what's got bubbling under uh, underneath is that uh, people are starting to have like private con uh, conversations and then they're wondering, oh, so it's not it's not me who's crazy and uh, everyone else is uh, uh, not, but it, it, it's like it's our group who is crazy. And then uh, the uh, this sort of talk can uh, start uh, uh, increasing and bubbling under until uh, the society reaches a point where suddenly the public opinion shifts uh, to, uh, after a very uh, small push, uh, it can shift to a new, a state where, for example, long COVID is then. Uh, same thing uh, can be applied to the level of the big headed guy. So you talk to him every day and every day, and nothing seems, nothing much seems to be happening. But 
at some at some level he's starting to um, question his own beliefs, and at some point, uh, just one extra uh, bit of evidence can push him to uh, this other uh, uh, perspective. So these rigid uh, belief systems can be destabilized with the right kind of continuous communication between uh, group members. And when I say right kind, I mean that it's uh, the, the kind of communication that doesn't put everyone uh, to make, make, them, make them dig uh, deeper bunkers for their uh, favorite opinions, but it's actually uh, uh, preserving trust. It's continuous and it's uh, re uh, flavored by a respectful uh, curiosity. And uh, so one, one uh, way to do this is the, that uh, if you consider the same situation as earlier, but now uh, this person uh, kind of says that, uh, well, expresses uncertainty. So uh, it says that they haven't made up their mind about this and uh, that there is, uh, on the one hand, it's this, and on the, on the other hand, it's that because uh, very often we see these things uh, and these opinions, they are very black and white. So very dichotomous and uh, exposing their dichotomies and trying to bring more nuance into them and uh, ex expressing uncertainty is something that uh, seldom, seldom you risk ostracism from a, a group or a community if uh, you say that you, you, don't, you haven't made up your mind yet. So there are a few things we can do alone and uh, we can, uh, can work with our communities. Ingrained uh, beliefs can lead to uh, gradual change, and uh, we can break these uh, collective illusions by voicing uncertainty. And that's uh, all I have to say for now.